Jen Mitchell, it's great to see you. You and I were both at the State of the City this week. Um, Jen, you are the president and CEO of the Doe Fund. You're the interim board chair of the NYC ETC. From your perspective, where you sat, what did you think of the mayor's State of the City? Hi, Greg. I'm only doing this because I love you, because I hate doing videos. <laughs> I'm so grateful and appreciative, as is our audience everywhere. It's fine. It's fine. Um, no, I was, I actually loved being there yesterday. Um, I found, I love, I was telling somebody there, I love all the pomp and circumstance. Mm -hmm. I love the singing in the beginning. Um, yes, yes. It was lots hopeful. of, lots of faith based providers there as well, communicating, welcoming us. It was yes. Tremendous. Yes. Very inclusive. I Very don't know where inclusive. the atheist was, but. Um... <laughs> maybe, maybe they were sitting up on the upper deck with me. I don't know what that was. <laughs> maybe um but i uh yeah it was great it was hopeful it was exciting it was celebratory it was optimistic um yeah it was i i it was great to be there and it was great to kind of hear firsthand in the moment and see everybody in the room's reactions and it was a packed house it was a packed house and 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 a vocal house there was some call and response segments of yes. the, of this as well that was fun um, that was fun. Some visual aids in the background here that as well, um, yes. which was interesting and engaging. Specific to your your work and what you do, what did what were your what were your takeaways? Is there anything particular that hit you like, okay, we're leaning into that one, or well, I'd like to know more about that one. There was a lot. I mean, there was a lot. Uh, I was excited about the mayor's focus on jobs. The mayor's focus on trash. The mayor's focus mm -hmm. on housing, housing and more housing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, those are all sweet spots in kind of the Joe Fun world. Uh, and so, you know, to, let's start with the top one, jobs. I think the line was 5 million new jobs by 2025. Um, that's a five lot of jobs. Five, 5 million jobs total. So it, he's going from four, we're going, we're going essentially from like 4.2 million to five, and they thought they could do it by 2026, but he's pushing it to 2025. So ramping up nearly a thousand more jobs, like in a year, is is what that is what that framework was. Yeah, that and that line, and then also I think there was another line: four hundred thousand jobs, yes. green jobs, green jobs by yes. 2040. And so for me, you know, my roots are in environmental policy. Um, when I was at the Hope Program, we did a lot of green jobs training. Um, here at the Doe Fund, we are really exploring green jobs. Um, and so I, I really think the jobs piece and the green jobs piece both resonated, both got me excited. Um, and then also simultaneously got me wondering, how is this going to happen? What does this look like? Where are the jobs? Are we going to make sure that the most vulnerable among us um, have the opportunity to get the skills um, to to get on that first step of the career ladder and then have a career trajectory and have upward mobility. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, obviously that's something that it was exciting. There weren't a ton of details around it and I can't wait to kind of dig in and and learn more about the details, but also obviously um, as interim board chair of NYC ETC, hopefully have a voice at the table um, in helping to, to put kind of the details on that framework, but it's, it's, it's very, it's very exciting. Um, two, I would, oh, the other thing he said about jobs actually that um, really struck, he was celebrating crime down, jobs up. up. Um, yeah. Crime down, jobs up. He repeated it several times. Mm -hmm. And I actually would say that in the reverse way, um, there's lots of studies that show that when people are working, they are much, much, much less likely to recidivate. I think I once, and this is many years ago, saw a study that said 87% of folks who recidivate are unemployed at the time that they recidivate. So the whole thing of linking crimes down and jobs up, I appreciated right. in the reverse, actually. The uh, jobs the, that's right. And that's on the heels of a couple of things we've learned, right? And that, you know, the absence of a restoration of a program for folks leaving Rikers to transition back Right, that was all about jobs and and training opportunities and support services. Seventeen million dollar program that was not restored. Interestingly enough, in this last budget, though, 
the parks program that was connected did get restored. But I, anyway, just an interesting that, and that was a chant. They, people were chanting, right? Yes. Yes. Prime they were, um, people were chanting, and I thought, well, let's un. We need to unpack this. This there's a lot more. Or at to least that. reverse it. Jobs up. Uh, Bring, leads to crime being down, um, which leads me to the next thing, um, which obviously is the Dauphin, where we have, you know, hundreds of our individuals who are, take part in our transitional employment program, Ready, Ready, Willing, and Able, they provide supplemental sanitation services on the streets. So the focus on trash and getting rid of trash bags and all of those things um, is something we can all get behind. And actually, studies show that um, if you remove trash and you like enhance and beautify spaces, it leads to like healthier bodies, healthier minds, improved public safety. Um, and so that's something we at the Doe Fund have always known and um, and really excited that it's getting the attention that it deserves. And as we also know, that can go hand in hand in workforce development. That can be very, getting jobs, or transitional employment programs that get trash off the streets can also lay the foundation for developing work ethic and work attitudes and all of those good things. So happy about the trash focus for several reasons as well. Um, he did do a little nod to cannabis um, mm -hmm. and, and the importance of the rollout that New York State did in focusing on legal cannabis shops uh, and, and, and the legal cannabis shops um, the first ones that were opened, including one that we opened in partnership mm -hmm. with folks, um, that those were, it was a, it was a, a social equity um, play that was saying that money that disproportionately um, was taken away from people in the past by cannabis criminalization can now be put back into those pockets with cannabis um, decriminalization. So appreciated that and really hope he and the state can work together on getting the enforcing the illegal cannabis shops and getting them off the streets because it's, you know, it's they're not legal and they're also dangerous right. because you don't exactly know what they're selling. And, and we as a coalition did some, we did a specific briefing for the city council on, on cannabis, a very robust sort of rundown. And of course the the that was centered on what's possible and what the relationship of the state has to be to make that uh, real. And then what are all the, 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 the prospects and potential in terms of employment and industry and equity. And of course, the default setting in any conversation about cannabis is just close the illegal shops, which obviously that needs to happen, but we can't lose sight, especially as the revenue numbers are starting to come in now, that this was about creating access and opportunity in a very different way than we typically think about it. Uh, here's my yeah, last question to you. Last okay, question wait, to before you. we do that, can oh, I just okay. plug oh, the oh, housing? Yes. Yes, yes, Sorry. yes, yes. Oh, See, yeah, I please, hate please. doing video, but once you get me started, I have- I know, love it. You're, you're <laughs> crushing it. Go for it. <laughs> housing, housing, housing. I mean, we, you know, the Doe Fund has 1,100 units of, of permanent housing, half of which is affordable, half of which is supportive. Um, and we have hundreds more units kind of in different stages of development. And so hearing him talk about, you know, the city of yes, and mm -hmm. thinking about zoning waivers and thinking about more ways to make sure people are safely and securely housed um, was obviously a big a big play there and something that we're really excited about. It was interesting at exactly the same time as the mayor was doing his thing downtown, the, the, uh, the planning commission was doing its hearing on the city of yes for economic opportunity. Now, there's different pieces to that city of yes conversation there's How'd that go? There. How'd it go? Do you know? Well, all I know is for the part that I was listening to, um, uh, the chair, uh, Dan Garodnik, or the you know who leads, mm -hmm. was was yeah. saying, we're gonna we're gonna mix it up as we normally do, where we're gonna hear folks in uh, in support, and then we're gonna hear when then well for a couple of those, and then we're gonna do a couple of you know in opposition, and we'll kind of go back and forth. Now, listen, I don't know if that meeting's still going on because I know that there was a <laughs> list. And remember, you can participate in those. You can sit in the session. You can do it virtually. You could do write in. In fact, there are, you can write in testimony for that until sometime in February. The volume of content that needs to be digested. Listen, the city is not great at nuance. We're, we're not great at taking on new things and new ways in every neighborhood. And the city of yes is, a, 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 I think, fascinating and transformational and so incredibly complicated that it's going to be interesting to see how it actually turns into 
all of what we hope I think it will, which is yeah. housing access, job access, economic development, um, everywhere where it needs to be for folks who need it more than ever. Yeah. Last thought for you. If okay. you were le if you were if it was your state of the city, what would you have led with? Oh, what would I have led with? I don't know what I would have led with, but I will say the things that I was kind of looking to hear that I didn't necessarily hear. Um, you know, there was we got a big shout out. The nonprofit sector got a big shout out and a round of applause. But I didn't hear about how nonprofits are going to get paid in more timely ways. And that is something that takes up way more headspace in every nonprofit leader that has city funding than it should. And so talking about improving systems for nonprofit payment, talking about, um, you know, adequate cost of living mm -hmm. increases for frontline mm -hmm. hum human service employees. Um, mm -hmm. Those are things kind of I was looking for on a real macro nonprofit level. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk lately about, uh, you know, the city stance on right to shelter. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious mm -hmm. as how how that has evolved. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the last thing probably I would have um, thought or, or, or would have would have wanted to hear more about is, you know, the past several months, we've heard about a lot of budget cuts, severe budget cuts and potential budget cuts and all that. And yet, we walked in, um, mm -hmm. we walked in with this excitement, we left with this excitement. And, um, and, and so all the things that we were celebrating yesterday, you need money to make them happen. And so just a deeper understanding of how the vision aligns with the dollars, uh, that would have been really good. Um, and what I will, I will end with um, is because I came back to my desk um, and, it, and it was resonating so much after that and it was so exciting. And I literally put it on a post-it note. Um, the mayor said several times, stay focused, no risk distract, no distractions, grind. Stay focused, no distractions, grind. No and I'm like, that's gonna be my mantra for 2024. So if nothing else, I got that's my right. 2024 mantra. I think uh I think that is the right mantra. I think it's the right mantra for the city. And I think it's only possible if we're all in it together. And I think. When the mayor talks about being together, because he made the point of saying that a number of times, you know, it's not just the private sector, it's not just um, it, it, it's not just labor. It, it, it's about all of us standing together. It's about New Yorkers agreeing we can be better than this, and that's what we want to stay focused yeah. on, and we want to well, no distract, and we want to grind on. And, yes. and and to your point, unless we get just pay. That gets very difficult for a, a significant set of New York. Yeah, and I think if there's any city folks that are listening to this video, um, both NYC, ETC, and the Dope Fund stand ready to partner um, on all these exciting initiatives. And we want to be good partners, and we love the city. Oh, another good line was... Um, there are two kinds of people, people who live in New York and people who want to live in New York. Um, we all love New York. We all want New York to be the best that it can be. Um, and we are we are here to partner to make all that happen and give, give opportunities to our most vulnerable and lift people up through workforce development and economic development and housing and all that stuff. Perfectly said. And, and just to add, because I know you know this well, there's nothing like New York City, but we are part of New York State. And the relationship between upstate and downstate matters in making a lot of what we just talked about possible. Jen Mitchell, thank you very much. You Thanks, are amazing. Greg. And I'm lucky to it, call you board chair. Thank you so it much. It wasn't as torturous as I thought it would be. <laughs> well, the next time we'll really get into it. Yeah, try harder. Try harder. You've been great. Thank you so thank much. You. I appreciate it. And thanks for all your work on behalf of the workforce development community. It's a pleasure and an honor. Thanks, Jen. Later.